Welcome to the Wealthy Speaker Podcast. This is the podcast dedicated to people who want to speak more as a way to build their income and grow their business. Welcome everyone to the Wealthy Speaker Show. My name is Jane Atkinson. I'm the author of the Wealthy Speaker 2.0 and the Epic Keynote. The topic of today's podcast is using behavior tools to enhance your business. Our guest expert is Jill Davis. Welcome, Jill. I am so excited to be here, Jane. Thank you. Well, you're coming to us from Snowstorm, Colorado. So welcome, and uh, <laughs> we'll bring you up out of the chaos just for a minute here. Let me give everybody a brief overview of your work. Jill mm-hmm. Davis has been using the principles of DISC for over 20 years in her sales and coaching careers to increase communication, connection, and profitability. She is certified as a DISC behavioral analysis expert. Through workshops, keynote speaking, and one-on-one coaching, Jill guides coaches, speakers, and community leaders to develop and present their own workshops as an additional stream of revenue for their business. Yay, wealthy speakers! (laughs) Jill is the creator of the Workshop Box Disc Edition. So Jill, tell us how you got started down this path of disc and speaking. Well, I will make it as quick and simple as I can. I learned to to present from a very young age. I was in speech and drama and all those things most of us speakers are in. And as I became a mom and stayed home to raise my children, I joined a direct sales company. I was in Mary Kay Cosmetics. And that was my first real introduction to the concept of DISC behavior. And When I was in Mary Kay, I had explored a lot of other behavioral styles because I was married to a psychologist. (laughs) But DISC for me grabbed my attention, allowed me to teach my unit members, the people who were in my team, my Mm -hmm. unit, my area, how to quickly connect with people, improve communications, and improve sales. And then when I left and retired from Mary Kay, it was just a natural segue to take my expertise, which I know is what you teach, to be an expert who speaks, <laughs> to take my expertise into the speaking and training world around us. Mm. Now, in our world of speaking and training, there are lots of different uh tools that we can use. Uh, and I, the one that I know the best is actually the DISC, so I'm thrilled to be talking to you about this. How do you think DISC compares to other behavioral assessments? How honest do you want me to be? <laughs> <laughs> Go all the way. <laughs> so I happen to love DISC, and I did research a lot of other behavioral um, analysis before I settled fully on DISC. Mm-hmm. And the reason I love DISC so much is, first of all, it's really the the author of DISC theory is really the forerunner of looking at emotional behavior in people back in the 1920s. So he is the one who started us all down this path. So everything else wraps around his theories. Then number two is it is the easiest one for people to quickly grab hold of and yeah. understand And there's a few others out there, and I'm hesitant to name the names, that are only 50% reproducible. And since I am a scientist by nature, it's really important to me that every time someone takes my behavioral assessment, that their core wiring is 95% reproducible. So every time they take it, they will 95% of the time get the same results. Whereas in other ones, it varies day by day based on your behaviors, not based on how you're wired internally. Right. And some of them are so complicated. You know, when you're answering the question, you think, is this really right? Like there are three answers out of five that could apply to you. And so I I have always felt that the DISC was the most straightforward. It's certainly the one that I can understand the easiest. Um, So how can understanding your DISC profile help a speaker see where they might get stuck in my ready, aim, fire process that we take them through as a part of our Wealthy Speaker University and our books and everything? Well, I love that question and I love your concept of ready, aim, fire because I've used that term before, not specifically the way you use it, um, when I'm teaching DISC. And so just, you know, a real quick overview. Ds are directive. Mm -hmm. I's are influencing, S's are steady, and C's are compliant or um, cerebral. I prefer to call them cerebral. Okay. And so a D is very fast-paced. They're very task-focused. So what they're probably going to do is they're going to just 
go in and they're going to fire. And they might at some point aim and get ready, but they're just going to fire, 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 fire till they finally hit a spot. Then our eyes are going to do something along this line. They're going to ready, 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 <laughs> na- aim, talk to a friend, ready, <laughs> chat, aim, talk a little bit more, and then maybe fire. Right. Our S's who are steady are going to be ready, 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 take a nap, <laughs> ready, 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 aim. If I feel safe, I'll fire. And then our C's actually are the tends to be the ones who go um, most in line with what you teach, which is ready, 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 aim, 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 aim. It's not quite perfect, but I'm going to fire anyway. And then they ready, aim, fire. Wow. Wow. That is so helpful. Um, I, it makes me want to dive a little bit more because I'm, you know, kind of make an assumption that people might know the, what each of them mean. Let's say that uh, we have different job categories. Which job would be perfect for which person? Or let's say a lot of people might be looking for team members. Can we, can we break it down a little bit? I know I'm putting you on the spot here. Um, can we break it down a little bit just so that people will understand each of the uh, quadrants a little bit better? Absolutely. And I'll tell you a little bit about each one and why they would fit into the team. So our Ds make up 3% of the population, according to some specific research by People Keys. Mm. So they tend to be our leaders, the ones who are in charge. I call them large and in charge. They walk loud, they talk loud, and they command a room. Okay. And so they're the ones who, you know, often are speakers, but they also, in event planners, they're the ones who are going to make sure that everything is, you know, big picture focused. Okay? Right. Then we have our eyes, and our eyes are what we call influencing. Our eyes say they have the gift of entertainment. And so our eyes are the real fun ones, the party ones, the ones that have a good time. Our storytellers, um, I know you've had some people on your podcast who are storytellers. They tend to be really high eyes. And they're a lot of fun, and they're great to hang out with, but detail is not their focus. They are fast-paced <laughs> and relationship-focused. So fun through not their strength but you do want to have some eyes because they make life exciting one and of my, then, one of my uh, old bosses used to say to me this is Vince Vicente years and years ago because I was never a detail oriented person that details schmeetails was my motto <laughs> <laughs> I like that I leave, might add leave that, that for the I C's <laughs> okay sorry I interrupted continue on S's no, not- <laughs> exactly. And that's what happens when I teach this, Jane, and when I speak and share it with audiences, everybody goes, oh, that's me. That's exactly what happened to me, just like you did. So our S's, which is our steady ones, they are a little slower paced and they're very relationship oriented. They're really good at making people feel comfortable and safe. They're the ones who bring us coffee. You know, when we're speaking, they make sure we have our water bottles and everything's laid out for us and everybody in the room has coffee. That's our high S's. Mm-hmm. And then our C's, which I have zero C in me. When I grow up, when I wake up in my next lifetime, I'm going to be a C. <laughs> They're the ones who are really detail-oriented. And we desperately need them because they keep us on track. Mm-hmm. They let us know when, you know, well, yeah, you're flying to San Diego today, but you've got to be in New York the next day. So we got to figure out how you're going to get in between those two places quickly. They set all that up. We just know where we want to go. So let's say we're hiring someone to really manage a lot of the nitty nitty gritty little details of our business that we don't want to manage. Um, We need somebody who has at least a fairly high C, correct? Correct. And my favorite is a high C with some D. Okay, gotcha. And if we're hiring someone to sell us, would you say that they would need to have a fairly high I? A lot of I because they're going to really be able to see the beauty in everything we do and they ignore our mistakes. (laughs) Well, God love them. (laughs) Uh, That's great. And also they're going to be people people and they're going to enjoy talking to people on the phone and, and building relationships, correct? Exactly. And they're not afraid to get on the phone. Okay. And they are, one of their fears, though, is fear of social recognition, okay. of loss of social recognition. Oh, right. So if you have a high eye who is not yet steady in their place, you don't want to send them into a room of people without somebody they know. Okay. Fair enough. And would you say, though, that a really solid team member who's going to stay with you true blue for years and years and years and years might be somewhat of an ass? 
Absolutely. I call our S's our happy little ducks because they just love hanging out with us. They love taking care of us. And they're really good at marketing as well because they make people feel important. And that's what everybody wants is to feel important. Okay. So that's a little bit of understanding around the four quadrants. Let's switch into show me the money (laughs) because we know that these at the other end of this line are saying, come on, Jay, get to it. Okay. So um, how can having a workshop kind of ready to go increase a speaker's revenue stream? Well, I think every speaker, I really believe this and I teach this, every speaker needs a workshop ready to go in their back pocket. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know about you, but I've shown up to do a keynote and a breakout speaker has disappeared, Mm -hmm. didn't show up, was sick, whatever. I will make the event planner so happy and I will increase my revenue by having something ready to go. And I say ready to go, meaning that it's already prepared, all your slides are ready, all your handouts are on a disk, on a flash drive, so you can just hand it to the event planner, and you're ready to walk into a room. Wow. And I love the disk concept or anything that teaches communication, because we can wrap communication. Every speaker that's listening to you, I believe, Jane, mm-hmm. can wrap communication and understanding other people around any topic they speak on. Absolutely, absolutely. And lots of our uh, listeners may already have something that they're using. If that's the case, fine. Uh, This is just another option for people. So not only can it help you in your interaction with the client, which I'd like to kind of talk about that uh, a little bit here as well, you know, uh, getting to know event planners, but you can also integrate it into your teaching and that could be tremendous. And people love to know about each other when they're in a classroom and we're talking Mm -hmm. about this. Don't they get really excited about that, especially in team building type programs? Absolutely. I love teaching. I do a lot of team building around this and I love it because just like you did, you grabbed hold of, you know, detail schmutails. We <laughs> all see something in ourselves that we maybe don't necessarily love and that other people can be critical about. And it takes it out of that criticism, puts a name to it. This is my personality style or my behavioral style. And it's just a lot of fun com- conversation between people. It really creates camaraderie with a team. Love that. Love that. Okay, so let's talk about connecting with event planners in order to get the engagement. How can DISC help us in that regard? Well, one of the really big ways I believe it helps is with our communication to our different personality styles. And I do have a quick way to to recognize personality styles we'll talk about hopefully in a bit. But once you know their personality style, D is give them bullet points. Do not write long epistles when you're writing an email to a D. Um, They're not going to read it and they're going to be actually a little irritated by it. Mm -hmm. Um, With eyes, plan on lots of time to write back and forth, probably get on the phone a few times. Just know that they want to talk and enjoy your time. An S is going to want to know all about what's going to happen if things, you know, if there's a problem, they want to make sure that you are, you have been around. So they're going to want a lot of endorsements. They're going to want to know what your success has been and what is really going to keep you showing up important to them that they not have any kind of conflict in the situation. Okay. And then the C's want every I dotted, every T crossed. And so if you don't have an answer immediately for a C, they ask you a question. You know, as an I, I have been known to maybe make up an answer to to <laughs> questions just to, you know, just to get it out there and be done with it. Um, C's will notice that and it will um, develop, make them uncomfortable with you. So if you're working with a C and they ask you a question you don't know, make sure and just tell them, I don't know, but I'm going to find out and get right back to you. That will make them much happier than if you create something up in your head like I've been known to do. <laughs> so what would be some indicators that would allow allow us to understand which type we're dealing with. We're not going to say, hey, before I start my relationship with you, would you mind taking this little 15-minute test? Uh, What would be some signals that we could go, okay, I'm dealing with a D here? Exactly. I love that because I have have used that example before. Don't ever ask me to take the test. It's kind of rude. (laughs) Uh, So, you know, the easy ways are to read into their communication. D's are going to bullet point you. I's are probably going to have a lot of typos, maybe, if they don't have Grammarly. And they're going to to have, you know, longer stories to you. 
S's are going to be, you know, real cautious about approaching you, you know, take lots of time. C's, again, are going to have very long, maybe three or four page letters with contracts and that kind of detail. Right. So that's the first way is through the email. But the fastest way, Jane, is if you can get them on a phone or just type this question into an email, which is real basic. And there's lots of different ways you can word it. But just basically, tell me a little bit about yourself. I'd love to get you to know you better. Oh. And each personality style gives a different kind of answer. Oh, that's so interesting. That's really helpful for me with my clients because when I say tell me a little bit about yourself and a book <laughs> comes back, I'm like, okay, now I know how I'm dealing. So somebody who might have a pretty high C is going to go into a lot amount of detail, correct? Exactly. And D, um, C's are probably going to ask you the question, tell me specifically what you want, because they don't want to be wrong. And you gave them a really open ended question. Right. Okay. 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 And, That's good to know. And S's will tell you about relationships. I's will tell you stories. And D's will tell you about their accomplishments. Okay. Very good. Very good. So, okay, let's say we do get the engagement and now we're standing in front of the audience. How can you reach each personality style during the actual presentation? Oh, that's a beautiful question. When you're speaking to your audience, first of all, if you've got, you know, and each audience actually has a different personality style that you will probably know a little bit either by your topic or by the organization where you're presenting. But you want to make sure you start and stop on time to honor your D's because they do not like to be taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. And I even, you know, if I'm training and I was brought on late, I'll say, you know, I want to honor your time. I know we were supposed to end at this time, so I'm happy to close right now. If it's a workshop, keynote speaking is different. Right. Um, the eyes, make sure you tell some stories about people, Make co use colorful imagery to keep them engaged because they move pretty quickly through life. Mm -hmm. Our S's want to know that you care about them as a person. Even if you're speaking in a corporate world, use some examples about things that can really impact them on a personal relationship level. Okay. And C's want to know your research. If you just stand up there and say, well, I think this is a good idea, they want to know why. They want to know the whys and they want to know the research. And even if you don't speak it from the stage, make sure you have it available to them in a link in your handout somewhere that you have research-based information. Oh, that's so good. So good. Okay, so um, you mentioned something about Wonder Woman. What's Wonder Woman got to do with anything? <laughs> <laughs> I love that because so many people get lost in disc and they can forget about, you know, well, I can't really remember all this. William Marston is the man who in 1928 wrote the original book that introduced disc theory. And nobody remembers who William Marston is, but a few geeks like me who love personality stuff. But he also created Wonder Woman. Oh. And so he is the original designer of Wonder Woman. And he actually used some of her superpowers to um, correspond with the DISC styles. Wow. And I can tell you what those are real quick if you're interested. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so for the Ds are her magic bracelets. Mm -hmm. Because when an Amazon loses her bracelet, they go insane with rage. And Ds may occasionally get upset if things don't go correctly. <laughs> However, if a villain fuses their bracelets together, it weakens the wearer. And Ds are very independent. So that's a reminder that if they're joined too tightly with other people, they are not as successful. Mm. Interesting. For the I, yeah. And so, and he did this intentionally as he created this. For the eyes, it's the power of tiara. Um, eyes love to attract attention, and the tiara really represents her femininity, her beauty, her um, success in the social world. Hmm. And then for the S's, that's fascinating. She, you know, she understands. <laughs> it's, and nobody ever thinks about this because we don't realize the connection. But S's, um, Wonder Woman can um, understand and communicate with animals, which is very relationship based. Hmm. And the S's have a very high skill of listening. And then, of course, with our C's, it's the lasso of truth because C's want to know the truth. Mm. Wow. I've always been aware. So I am an I with a D uh, backing it up. And my D can come out if the other I's cannot make a decision. I really... Um, you know, don't like traveling in a large group of people, which is not very good because I'm getting ready to go to 
uh, a big wedding down south with 35 people. Ah, um, but if people can't make a decision, it drives me crazy. And then my, my D picks up. So different pieces of this can actually, um, under stress and various situations, you, whatever your m- most uh, predominant behavioral style, maybe getting taken over by something else, can it not? Absolutely. And we all have like a primary and a secondary, and we go into one or the other under stress. I'm a high I with a secondary S, but I go into my S under stress. Mm. So what does that mean? So what that means is an S is very relationship oriented and a little bit um, slower pace. So I hide away. Slow down. But when we have a primary and secondary, that's simply, and, and one of the cautionary tales I always give when we talk about this, Jane, is this is not to put anybody in a box or to say you are this way. Sure. It's to help you understand yourself better. So when you say, you know, you can become, you know, kind of frustrated with people, you're aware of that. You know that that's part of who you are. So you can manage that and go, okay, wait a second. I'm in a room full of S's. I can let them take a few more de- minutes to decide. Or you can say, you know what? The S's want me to make the decision. I'm just going to make it. Yeah. <laughs> so you get to, to use the knowledge to interact with other people in a better, more efficient way. Uh, you'll probably like this. I'm going to put myself, I'm going with my family, my husband's family and my family. <laughs> I'm going to put oh myself my. in a joy bubble. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Uh, just exactly. let it all bounce off of me. Somebody else can make the decision. I'll be in the bubble. Thank you very much. Probably sipping a margarita or something. I love that. Okay. okay. So you've got some things for our listeners. How can they get in touch with you? And um, what is it that you would like to offer them up today? Yeah, Jane, thank you so much. So I, they can get in touch with me by emailing me at jill at jilldaviscoaching.com. And my website is real simple. It's theworkshopbox.com. And if they use your famous um, training, Ready, Aim, Fire, they can take 15% off of any one of the products that I have available, including one that's just a really basic understanding of DISC, all the way up to a ready-to-go workshop for them. Wonderful. So that's going to be in the coupon code at checkout? That's how you'll use yes, that ready exactly. and fire. Does it matter mm-hmm. all lowercase or all uppercase? Nope, it doesn't matter. Okay, fantastic. Well, Jill, this has just been so much great information. I really know that our Wealthy Speaker listeners will be able to, you know, just maybe take this in as an idea. Maybe it's something, maybe you're just getting started and you can pull DISC in to uh, give you just a little bit more content and obviously to help you understand your clients and your audiences better. And if you can bring it into your sessions, I think that might be a lot of fun for people. So I, anything, anything else you'd like to add before we close today? Not at all, Jane. Just thank you so much for letting me share this with your listeners. It really does make a difference when we understand ourselves and then we can understand others better. Wonderful. And for that, we will say uh, thanks, everyone, for listening, and we'll see you soon, Wealthy Speakers. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to The Wealthy Speakers Show. Please visit speakerlauncher.com for your free Wealthy Speaker audit and visit speakerlauncher.com forward slash podcast for show notes and many more resources to help you catapult your speaking business. See you soon, wealthy speakers.